Welcome back to the podcast and the podcast. I'm Dr. Greg Eckel. I'm Dr. Greg Nye. Our topic today is epilepsy. This was a uh, question that came in over the airwaves for us. Yeah, it's a little bit delayed that we're getting to it. Apologies for that. Better late than never. All right, you, should we just take off? Yep. Right All right, so uh, epilepsy, we should start out by saying here in Oregon, it's one of the two conditions where naturopaths are required by law to have it co-managed with uh, conventional doctors. Uh, cancer is the other case where uh, naturopaths are not allowed to be the exclusive provider of care for someone diagnosed with epilepsy. And there's a whole political background on that. I think it was a turf war when the law was written and um, you know that that is just what historically what we're left with here yeah. in, in Oregon. So that said, uh, epilepsy, it's you know the conventional management for epilepsy is like the conventional management for most things. Right. Actually. You give a medication. You give uh, yeah or multiple medication <laughs> multiple usually multiple medications that calm the activity of the central nervous system, and you know thereby hopefully inhibit uh, inhibit the seizure seizures. activity. And so the rule then for the naturopaths with epilepsy, as with anything, is to um, provide the various uh, nutrients, the conditions that will, that will make it most likely that the nervous system doesn't, doesn't go into that reactive state where a seizure occurs. And there are, in fact, a number of nutrients that can be utilized Actually, before I get into yeah. that, we should point out that there are a number of causes for seizures. Right. Um, and just like anything, naturopaths are obsessed with... The question, why? Why is it happening? Right, right. why? So find and identify the cause. Um, you want to run through right. some of those? Yeah, so you've got uh, hormone imbalances. There can be traumas to the body. Uh, you know, from childhood fevers, that's the big issue with uh, kids and yeah. high fevers because of the un... Um, uncertainty of the brainwave frequency, a high fever spikes and can trigger uh, a brainwave that's not advantageous mm -hmm. and that creates a seizure. Um, we've got stresses can create that, brain lesions can create uh, seizure activity. And even just emotional, you know, emotional traumas, psychological states that can, can directly lead to recurring seizures. And nutrient deficiencies as well. So there, you know, we take a broad look at the whole, the whole picture. I mean, this is not new news to our listeners or viewers, but um, just as we, as we put the case together, that's, those are all of the facets that we're looking at. And there's some really great research on each, each component of this as well. Right. And so in our, in our experience here, I could give an example of a particular uh, patient with seizures, recurring seizures, and it was really a that was a, a psychological issue that in order to get at the cause of the seizures, uh, most of our time was really spent in counseling for the most part. And the other therapies were sort of adjunctive and it was, it was getting into those deeper um, emotional and psychological issues that were feeding into the seizure state and ultimately led to a resolution of the seizures altogether. Nice. Um, and then other cases where I think um, there is a more, uh, it's harder to get at the cause and identify it and all those things where you start to bring in all those naturopathic elements that can help to lower the seizure threshold um, as much as possible. And so there are certain nutrients, for instance, vitamin B6. There's right. research on um, that there is a whole host of you, there are seizures that are that are sensitive to deficiencies of vitamin B6 and can be treated with vitamin B6. Another nutrient that has been uh, studied and can help to balance out brain waves is inositol, which is one of the it's sort of one of the unknown B vitamin. It falls in the B vitamin category, okay. but um, inositol is another that can help to balance brain waves and it works synergistic synergistically with some other nutrients. Yeah, and I think you really touched on it, like our goal is to decrease the severity and the frequency of the seizure activity. Um, I had a patient, she was getting about 60 absent seizures uh, every minute. Uh, just, you know, and you wouldn't really catch it if you did, weren't tuned into 60 it. 60 a minute. 60 a minute, like almost every second. Uh, just 
quickly, real in and out, in and out. She just kind of flutter her eyes to the left, and she would be right there with you in the conversation. Um, and it, the, we got those slowed down to about three per day. Uh, and these are, I think a lot of people don't realize that there is a lot more seizure activity that is happening out there. Yeah. This is not just grand mall seizures where you see right. the person on the ground shaking. These can be little brain glitches that happen mm -hmm. where basically their, their eyes just flutter up to the left or to the right. Uh, and that tells you what the location in the brain is where, where the seizure activity is. But it, it can be really subtle. So it's not um, the major shaking, yeah. that, you know, drama That's pretty that rare you see that on television around seizure activity. Um, and for her, what, what really worked is we did uh, hormone balancing, mm -hmm. right? So you were talking about those nutrients. For her, it was really around these, real, the advent was around uh, the beginning of her menses when she started uh, bleeding and had carried on for about five years. Now, she was on medication. Actually, she was not on medication. She tried all of the meds, and they did not agree with her at all. I mean, it basically made her comatose, depressed, uh, and these are common symptoms that we hear from folks that have been on those meds. If you, are, if you do have seizure disorder and have, are on medications, I'm not recommending going off at all. You don't, right. I mean, this, it's a serious no, condition <laughs> and uh, you know, that could really create a lot of harm for you and loved ones in your life. So I'm not recommending that at all, but for her, her parents decided this, it was better to have the seizures than to have their daughter in that comatose yeah. state. Um, and we were actually really able to limit that down with doing Chinese herbs and acupuncture and physical medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a pretty intensive treatment plan. And then we also did the progesterone. There is a lot of great research around also using progesterone uh, for hormonally, um, for the hormone component of seizures, if there is one. I really think that uh, epilepsy is, is one of those conditions where I think that uh, conventional and naturopathic therapies can really work great together. Yeah. Um, there are those times that with naturopathic therapies that you just talked about and the whole host, you can, you can get somebody to zero. But right. there are other times you can bring down what might be eight seizures a day down to two a day. Right, and that's a huge quality of life increase. Huge increase, right. but then you can then bring in a medication that is much more effective at controlling two than it is at eight. controlling eight. Right. And it's a much it's a lower, lower dose, dose of medication, right. and so overall there's less negative impact of the medication, and somebody's quality of life improves dramatically. So you had um, you had some success with low dose naltrexone. Naltrexone, yes, um, and that's one. So naltrexone is a therapy. Uh, it's too much to go into the whole. Uh, pharmacology of it right now, but it, naltrexone is a therapy that works on the uh, opioid, opiate receptors of the brain. So our bodies produce endorphins, which bind up those receptors, and naltrexone is used at very low dose, not um, high dose at all, very low dose, and it affects the opiate receptors of the brain, and in doing so, at least uh, in a particular case that I have used that with, it seemed to make a significant difference in the frequency and the severity of the seizures that were experienced. So again, those are um, just the kind of things that in the naturopathic toolbox we tend to go to, the less invasive kinds of therapies that right. can help to balance. There is the ketogenic diet as well, which yes. we haven't, you know, usually we will talk about diet up front in these, uh, in these episodes, but uh, there is some really, interesting, compelling research on a ketogenic diet, and we have used that, I've used that successfully with mm -hmm. folks. Um, it is a little bit harder for folks yeah. to carry out, um, but it is worth looking at um, as far as another facet of the case. Yeah, there are a lot of resources on around the that. Books and even at, I think Johns Hopkins has a whole, so it's an inpatient. Manual, uh, right. They have a, where you, oh, they, you go in and to check implement in. the diet, they, right. it really can be intensive and sure need a lot of monitoring. Yeah. So, all right, I think that wraps up our epilepsy yeah. discussion. Right, thank Anything you for the question, and we'll yeah. take more questions at questions at naturecuresclinic.com. Send us a note, and we will get to it when we can. Yeah, and thanks Th for listening. Thanks for joining in.